Hey again, I'm Sharad and welcome back to Red. Today I want to talk to you about ChatGPT and what it can do for you as a designer. I just recently started using it uh, to develop uh, prototypes and uh, within about 14 minutes I was able to mock up something that would have otherwise taken me days. So normally you would have to schedule some time with uh, front-end developers, sit with them, express your idea to them as best as you can, probably show references by looking at other websites that are implementing it. You can avoid all of that just by using ChatGPT. So here's how you can prototype your ideas and present them to developers and communicate much better with them. Here's how you can do it. Let's go. All right, so this is what I'm gonna need to do right now. Uh, we have got this uh, website kind of designed. Uh, it's just a coming soon uh, kind of a thing and we are encouraging the user to uh, put in their email address and join the waitlist. So this is the components. This is what I've got set up. This would normally just be sufficient to build a website on its own. But what I want to do is kind of add a bit of parallax in the background. Uh, have these images all split up, the, the war table in the front, the, the room itself as another component, and then the, what is going to be seen through the window over there. I'm going to use uh, ChatGPT to help me do that. So we can just watch me walk through this entire thing and I'm going to give you my thoughts on how uh, it comes out if, if we do succeed, right? So I'm just going to go over to my setup here. The project is called Waitlist and this is VS Code. I, I know there'll be three files uh, that are going to be required. Um, so I've got an index.html, uh, scripts.js, and a styles.css all set up and ready uh, to go. Uh, I've got the code all lined up on the uh, over here so that you can see all the code being in, input at, at once. And this is the preview window on the right. So whatever we do on in the phone will actually show up as an HTML page on the other side. All right, so I have ChatGPT here. I've started a new chat and I'm going to switch into GPT-4 because the code is definitely much better uh, on GPT-4 than 3. Uh, GPT-4 currently is a paid version, but I think uh, that's going to become the free version in the future. So I'm simply going to start by typing in what I want in plain English and the files that I would like it in as well. I keep saying please here, I can't help myself, but that's not in no way a requirement. Let's see what it does. I suspected it would do index.html, and that's what it did. Because it's the one that's searched for by default as well on web servers. Alright, so it's since it's done with HTML, I'm just gonna go copy and paste that. You'll see that the styling, nothing else is uh, in included here. That is probably what is getting written here in styles.css. And here, I'll just add the styling. And now we got everything aligned in the middle. Perfect. I don't know why it's got a script, but let's copy that out. That in as well. All right, it's not doing anything, but I think it's ready for form submissions. All right. So let's get the copy again. Click ma. And I'll start pasting it over here. So this is the body copy. Right. We'll come back to adding the by line. So you'll notice I'm making it go through things step by step and uh, rather than declaring the whole thing all at once. It seems to do better with code writing in this way. So I'm just going to ask it to create all the background elements as three different layers. It begins writing the entire code out right away. So the entire HTML is being written while I just need these three div tags uh, that I need to copy. So I'm just going to scroll up and copy these div tags and paste them.
the style sheet is being written out in incomplete uh, and I prefer this approach uh, but I've often run into character limits or the prompt uh, limits uh, while executing projects. So this may not be suitable. So here's image one. So let's call it images slash layer one. Oops, I think I made a mistake above. I'm just going to go fix it. Okay, on to image three. Okay, I'm not sure why the positioning is the way it is. Okay, let's figure out why images are overlapped. Okay, it's telling me about the index, which is correct, but I needed to just write the code for me. All right, so this is easy enough. So I'm just going to go in there and write this index minus three. It's an e index minus two. X minus one. All good. Now the thing I need to do is change the background color to black and set the font color to a shade that I'm gonna just pop over to Figma and get. So I hit go and it immediately begins generating the entire file. This time, however, I don't want it to generate the entire file, so I hit the stop button on the right and just go there and copy the changed elements and paste it into my code. Can just add this class over here. Yeah. After the last change, a new issue is cropped up, the backgrounds disappeared. But no worries. So, as you can see, I can just describe the problem and it's going to try and figure out what the issue is. Okay, so it was right and figured this out correctly. The next thing I want to do is to have the images be full size in height. So I just describe what I want to do again uh, after getting the size. And boom, it starts making it. Okay, that's a good way to do it. This is just bugging me, so I'm gonna name this layer three and name this layer one. I'll pick the relevant changes to the file use. I'm obviously only doing this because ChatGPT is gonna take a while. Uh, to finish rendering the files in the background. Okay, it's still in the same order, so that's right. All right, so it's done with the code. Yes, this look a lot better. So since I want to just be able to copy and paste the code uh, without any alterations, what I'm going to do is tell ChatGPT what the URLs or the images that I'm using are, so that when it spits it out, uh, spits out the code, it can do it with the right URLs in place. And as you can see, it says OK. All right, now the parallax bit. Come back and fix the fonts. Um, I'm definitely dope. Now let's get the parallax. Okay, so that's what parallax is, but depending on where I move the mouse on the page, 
the layer which is furthest away should move the most, uh, but the layer in front moves very little. Precisely what it should be doing. Let's see if it gets it right. I'm excited. Let's see. Oh, it's taking 20, 10, and 5 pixels each. That's nice. Okay. So when I said farthest from the viewer and close to the viewer, it automatically translated all that to Z indexes. So it knew which is the image furthest away and which is closest. That's super impressive in itself, right? It even gives it the explanation for how to do this thing. So that's brilliant. Excellent. Let's replace the whole code. Oh, beautiful. You can see that happening. I can see this. This is it. This is what I want to do. There's something funny going on with the images here, uh, but that's quite literally all I want to do. I'll just make it... Uh, I'll just change these values a little just to kind of pronounce this even more. So I'll make it 30... 20... And then, just so that it's a little more visible. Uh, but let's see. Yeah, there we are. So there you have it. I need to just go clean up a bunch of the the fonts and uh, the figure out why this uh, window image is not coming out correctly. It's probably got to do with the image itself. But I'll get that fixed. Um, but the parallax effect is mocked up for typed specifically for this. And all I have to do is pass this code on to the front end team, then do all the remaining fixes and publish. So there are some things that you need to keep in mind when working with ChatGPT. And these are things you don't want to do. I found out the hard way. So I'm going to just share that with you here. Firstly, ChatGPT 3.5 is not just a shade less uh, good uh, than 4.0. 4.0 is a step change altogether. So you want to try and use 4.0 or something later uh, as much as possible. Your code accuracy is much better. Second thing to keep in mind is that you don't want to write all your instructions in as great uh, detail as possible in one prompt and then supply it to ChatGPT. It actually counterintuitively works much better if you make it go step by step with you. So you give the instructions one at a time and make it get to where you want to go. Uh, and the output is going to be uh, through this process is going to be much better than if you were to pack it all in one uh, prompt. It's actually just not going to work if you just try to do it all in one prompt. As usual, if you found any value in this uh, video, uh, just hit the like and uh, let uh, the algorithm know uh, that uh, these videos are useful and they'll keep uh, popping up in front of the right people. And if you have any suggestions for topics that I should be talking about, things that are of interest to you, then I'm going to work on those projects and uh, get those videos out to you. Let me know in the comments. All right. Have a great one. Take care.